All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about executing Python with AI agents. We're going to start off by talking about why having an agent execute Python code is interesting. Then I'm going to walk you through the two core methods of executing Python code with agents, the pros and cons of the two methods. I'm going to set up a LangGraph flow. So we're going to be building an agent in LangGraph. And finally, we're going to see how this agent works. So we're going to have an agent that allows you to execute arbitrary Python code. All right, so why do we want agents to execute Python code? So look at the following diagram. By now, we all know that we can have the high IQ LLMs, like the ones from OpenAI and Anthropic, return structured outputs, such as JSON. So we can feed it a prompt, and we can get JSON in return. And once we have JSON data, that allows us to make API calls, and we can get that data back, and we can expand the context for the LLM. However, having the JSON code is only the first step of acting, so taking the action. We need to execute something in order to make the function call. And that something is typically a piece of Python code that we want to execute. So we'll take a JSON, the JSON data that is returned by the LLM, and then we'll make a call to an API using Python. So that's why we typically want the LLM or the agent to execute Python for us. And Python is just one of the things that we can have it execute. We can also execute SQL, we can execute Terraform and so on. So we can actually create agents that allows us to build anything really. And this is what makes agents so powerful. Okay, so let's have a look at the two core methods of executing Python with agents. One is using the built-in exec method, and the other one is using subprocess run. Let's start with exec. So the exec function, that's the simplest way to execute Python code as strings. That's typically what you will find in the LangGraph documentation. And that allows you to run code in a provided namespace, which in turn lets us control what variables are available to the code. And to give you an example of what I mean by that, a very minimal, simple example here. So I have a code string here called code. And the code string contains a function called greet that takes a name as an input and returns hello name. And then I can call the function greet with a name, in this case, Alice, and pass that to the message. Now I've passed the string hello Alice to the variable message. If I execute this code string, I now have access to the variable message and I can print out message and get hello, Alice. I'll show you how that works in a bit. I can also pass in a namespace to the exec function. In this case, I have the same code string. The namespace is just an empty dictionary. If I pass in the code string and the namespace, the message will now be contained within the dictionary. So if I try to print out the message, I'm going to get an error because it's contained in the namespace that I passed to the exec function. So that's the exec, a very minimal example of how to use exec. Let's have a look at subprocess run. Now, subprocess runs code in a separate Python process. And this provides more isolation, but it also requires a bit more setup. And also have a subprocess example here. So to execute code with subprocess, we import subprocess, and then we call run on subprocess, and we pass in a list of arguments. The first one being the command that we want to run, and the second one being the argument that we, we are going to pass to the command. And then I'm setting two parameters. I'm setting capture output equal to true, because I want to capture the standard output and standard error. And I'm setting text equal to true, because I want subprocess to return text and not bytes. Now, if I print the result of this, I'm going to get a completed process. And I can access the actual result, so in this case, hello world, by calling standard out and strip on the result. And then I'm going to get hello world. I just want to highlight something before we move on to executing this code. Sometimes you're going to see that subprocess run is called with the parameter shell set equal to true. In this case, you're going to get access to all the features of the shell, and you're going to be calling subprocess run with a single string. Do not do this if you are executing 
AI generated code because this is actually a security risk. So always have shell equal to false or don't include it. Then it's going to be false by default. So let's have a look at what this looks like in VS Code. So here we are in VS Code. I have a mono repo here with three different projects. When the top one here, agent exec, where I have an agent.py file with all the land graph code. And then I have a notebook from where I'm going to execute the agent code. But first, let's just walk through the example that we just saw using exec and subprocess run. So I have my code string here with the read function, and I'm going to assign read Alice or hello Alice to the message variable. If I execute this, and then I execute the code string with exec, access to the message variable. Same thing with sub process. Here I have a slightly different example than what I showed you before. I have Python here. So I'm going to import sub process. I'm going to call run on sub process, and I'm going to pass a list to sub process run. The first part of the list here is the command. And then the subsequent elements in the list are arguments to that command. If I run this, you can see that I'm going to get a completed process in return. And if I want to extract the actual output, which is hello world in this case, I can just call standard out on the results. And I'm going to get hello world. And what we can do now is we can wrap these two methods of executing Python in functions, and then we can use them as nodes in a land graph graph. And that allows us to build agents that can execute arbitrary Python code. All right, so before we move on to building the agent, let's just have a look at the pros and cons of do a comparison of exec versus subprocess run. So I've set up this table to compare the two methods of executing Python code. All right, so let me briefly just highlight some of the main differences. Exec runs Python code directly in the same interpreter, whereas subprocess run calls external commands. So if you want to run Python code with subprocess run, you'd run a separate Python process. Exec can't run system commands directly. It only handles Python code, whereas with subprocess run, you can run any command. You can run commands like git, or you can launch another Python script in isolation. Exec works in the same process so if something goes wrong, it can break your main script, whereas subprocess run launches a new process. Exec can access and modify all your current variables. That can be powerful, but at the same time, it's also risky. So I would say use exec when you need to dynamically run Python code in the same process. Use subprocess run when you need to run external programs or safely isolate a script. All right, so let's have a look at how to set up an agent in LangGraph that allows us to execute code with these two different methods. Here's an overview of the flow that we're going to set up. We have a start node here, and the first thing we're going to do, we're going to generate some code, some Python code. After we've generated some Python code, we're going to execute that Python code with either exec or saw process run. If the code executes, we're going to have a success and we're going to end this. If not, and the number of tries is less than three, we're going to regenerate and re-execute, and hopefully we'll have something that executes within three attempts. So pretty simple. And let's have a high-level overview of what the code looks like. So the first thing we're going to need is a graph state. A graph state summarizes everything that's happening and has happened up until now in the flow that we just saw. So the graph state is a type dictionary. That means it has independent value types in the dictionary. We have messages, which is a list. We have errors, which is a string. Then we have generation, which is a generated code, which is a string. We have the number of iterations as an integer, and we have the execution method, which is a string. Next up, we have the generate node. It takes the graph state as input, and then it's going to do basically what a simple lang chain chain will do. It will take a chat prompt template, it's going to take an LLM, and then it's going to invoke the prompt that we're creating with the chat prompt template, and it's going to generate the code. It will return the state, the updated state is going to return the generated code, and it's going to add one to the number of iterations. After we have generated the code, we're going to check the code. We're going to take, again, 
the graph state as input to the code check, then we're going to execute the code with either sub process or with exec. And the execution method is contained in the graph state, which is why we're passing it to the code check. After we have checked the code, we will determine whether we should retry or not. If we do not get an error, we end. We know that we now have code that executes. If we do get an error, and if the number of iterations is less than three, we're going to regenerate. Another last thing we're going to do is we're going to assemble the workflow. So we're going to take the state graph and we're going to add the nodes that basically consist of the functions that we just saw. So we're going to add a generation node or generate node. We're going to add the code check node. We're going to add an edge between start and generate because generate is the first thing we're going to do. Then we're going to add an edge between generate and code check because we want to check the code after we generate. And then we're going to add a conditional transition from code check to either generate or end. And that transition depends on the output or the return value of should retry. So if should retry returns generate, we're going to regenerate. If should retry returns end, we're going to end. And that's the basic workflow. I'm going to show you what that looks like in the code in a bit. But before we go to the code, I'll just quickly show you the two main function. As I said before, we are wrapping the execute with exec and execute with sub process in functions because that allows us to add them to the workflow. And um, this is what the functions look like. I'm going to show you how we actually use these in the code now. And this is going to give you a framework for executing arbitrary Python code. And the sky's the limit for the potential applications of this. All right, so here we are back in VS Code. And we have three questions we're going to feed to the agent. First one, write, a, write code that takes a list of numbers and returns the sum. Second one, write code that takes a list of numbers and returns the sum of squares. And the third one takes the sum of squares of even numbers that are greater than three. And then we have some test data, which is just a dictionary with one key and a value, which is a list of numbers with eight numbers. And that's the data that we're going to feed to the agent. So let's have a look at the agent code. First off, we have the graph state that we just talked about. And then we have a function that validates the generated Python code with the built-in ast module. So we're going to check that the Python code is syntactically correct before we execute it. And here we have our two main execution functions. We have execute with exec and execute the sub process. And let me just walk you through the functions. So execute with exec takes the generated code string and the test data as input. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to validate the code string with the validate code function. If the code is not syntactically correct, there's no point in executing this. If it's correct, then we can execute it. So we're going to create a namespace out of the test data. Remember, that's a dictionary. So we can just pass that dictionary to the exec function along with the code string. And if we execute that, we're going to get the result back in the namespace, and we can extract that. And that's all there is to it, wrapping exec into a Python function called execute with exec. And that can be used in LangGraph. Then we have execute with sub process. And this function is also going to check the generated code string as input and the test data. And we're also going to validate the code in this case. Now remember that sub process run will execute the code in a separate process. In order to wrap this in a function that we can use with an agent, we need to create a temporary file. So we're going to use the temp file module to create a temporary Python file that can be executed with sub process run. So we're going to write the generated code string to that file in the script content. And then we're going to extract the script path from the generated temporary Python file. And when we have that script path, we can pass it along with the input JSON to the Python command. And we can call sub process run with this list as an input. So the Python command, the script path, and the input JSON. This is going to give us a completed process from which we can extract the output. The last thing we're going to do here is we're going to clean up after ourselves. So we're going to use the path module to unlink and remove the temporary generated file. These are the two functions that we are using to execute uh, in the agent workflow. 
Now let's have a look at what that looks like. So first I'm going to execute the first code block here, and then I can define a function that allows me to format the output of the agent. I'm going to call that test questions exec. And it's just going to format the output from the agent in Markdown, so it's nice to look at. And if I execute test questions with exec, we should see the agent run, right? So here we have the solution that is generated and we have the output, right? So this is the generated code. Similarly, for test questions with sub process, we can also format that in a nice way. If we run this, you'll see that sub process is going to generate the exact same thing. So these are two different ways of executing Python code with agents. If you'd like to see how the agent is assembled, I'm going to share the code in a link below the video. I suggest that you check a look at the code and see how the workflow is set up. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.